It's a pleasure to introduce you, Mr. David Ward. It's uh, someone who has been long overdue to have a conversation with, so it's a real honour and pleasure to have you here today. Hi, Alistair. How are you doing? You all right? I'm good. I'm good. I've been looking forward to this. Um, right, as is norm by anyone who ever listens to these uh, these podcasts and videos, is I never have an agenda and I don't have a set of questions to ask you. So I thought we'd just have a, a chat about life, the universe, everything and creativity. But one of the things that can, came to my mind initially is you have been making photographs for, for quite a few years. Um, and I- Very tactful, very tactful. That, that's about, that, that's where the tact ends. It, it, <laughs> it goes downhill from there. Um, do you still make photographs for the same reasons that you started making photographs? If so, that's interesting. And I'd, I'd like to hear more about that. And if not, what's changed and why? Um, no, I definitely, well, depends how far back you want to go. But um, so I started uh, making photographs as most people do to um, make a, a recording of reality to you know dip that bucket into the river of time and hold it forever um, and that was really about illustrations I suppose to make a, an artful illustration um, but sometime in my 30s I guess I decided that um, that wasn't really what I was interested in doing. I was working as a commissioned photographer for magazines and books and advertising agencies and people like that. And I realized that I was sort of losing interest in the process, um, that it no longer really excited me. And I think for a long time, I've been aware that really I was much more interested in, in using photography as a tool for inquiry. So uh, for a way of looking at the world and trying to make some sense of the world, and, and I think especially as a way of um, looking at what the difference is between how the camera sees and how the human brain eye combination works. Now, the downside of all of that is that um, when people look at my photographs, they can't tell what's the difference between the reality and what <laughs> and why I made the picture. But, um, you know, there are other things that come along. I, I, I'm, I like to make images that, well, I think my best images, let's put it that way. I think my best images have uh, um, a, a degree of ambiguity about them, mystery. Um, uh, I'm, I'm captivated by beauty, um, but not necessarily the kind of um, straightforward uh, sort of supercharged pretty, but, but beauty in a more kind of classical uh, philosophical sense of something that embodies a, a truth um, and um, and I like the process of simplifying so I think if, if you put all of that together I would say that the reason the main reason that I make pictures now uh, is is to inquire is is to look at the world and and, and to try and uh, make an image that's a question I suppose and I don't, it doesn't always have an answer, it, it, and, but it's the process of that, it's that puzzle solving thing that, that, um, that spurs me to do it, I think. One of the things I always love about these conversations is having a blank canvas where we can paint uh, a conversation very much like a composition and it has nuance and subtlety and different areas within it that we can explore and each one of them is like a, a little micro universe because already you've raised about a dozen points, each of which could be numerous hours of exploration. So I don't think we're going to run out of uh, anything to talk about in the next uh, little while. Um, the, this evolution of intent, I suppose, or purpose within your photography, was that a gradual thing or was there a was there kind of a an epiphany a, an event horizon of no I, I'm, I'm dissatisfied with this or was so was, how gradual was that transition uh, it's yeah it's difficult to to pin it down I suppose um part thing was that I was I was a commissioned photographer and I and I and I was no longer really enjoying the process of 
of making pictures for other people, fulfilling other people's briefs. Um, and now for some photographers, that's a, that's a really enjoyable thing. They like that kind of puzzle solving. Somebody gives you something, you have to work out how to do it. Um, that was never really creative enough for me. It wasn't personally creative enough, let's say. I think it, it is a creative process, but it, it wasn't personal enough for me. Um, and I think probably the, the, the kind of turning point or the tipping point for me was I was doing some work for an advertising agency, uh, getting paid very well um, and really not enjoying it. And then I got to the end of the process and I thought, well, why am I doing this? It, it, it's, it becomes that work-life balance thing. So was I doing it to earn enough money to do other things in my life, which I know a lot of people do, or was I doing it to, for life itself to be, well, I can't remember, well, somebody said life, some, it wasn't Picasso, but somebody said life should be a work of art. You know, right. what, was, what was I going to do with it? Um, how was I going to spend that money? What, what, what would it get me? Uh, and I and I decided, I suppose, that I would rather do the things I want to do, even if that meant that I wasn't particularly well paid or if it meant that I wasn't able to do some other things. But at right. least what I was concentrating on were things that I was uh, enjoying. Uh, and I think if I look back to when I was at college, I, I did documentary photography primarily when I was at college, and I enjoyed that process of inquiry, being with a subject or a number of subjects and trying to find out something about their lives. And I didn't have that process of inquiry once I became a commissioned photographer. Right. Um, and so I think that's, it would took long, a reasonably long time. Uh, I started working in 80, I think, and it was around about 99, something like that, that I decided that I didn't okay. really want to do it anymore. Um, and then I fell in to teaching uh, on workshops and that, I think really kind of changed my, my perspective. So 20 years or so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. About that. Yeah. Now, obviously when we make these decisions to um, self-actualize, I guess, you know, cause really that that's the process that you've, you've described is, is sort of doing something for, for growth, personal growth, as, as well as uh, creative output, I suppose. I see those two things very much walking hand in hand, that it's almost impossible to have one without the other in a meaningful sense. Yeah. So when you talk about this inquiring nature of looking at subjects or scenes or textures, I guess, and, and uh, this inquisitiveness, for, for, on an external level how much of you do you think that that process has catalyzed internal and introspective development do you see it do you see a parallel between an exploration of the external as somehow mirroring further exploration on an introspective level um oh gosh I think what it had I, I don't know if it has on a um in a personal developmental kind of way uh, but it certainly has spurred investigation into various branches of philosophy and the science of perception and uh, reading up about a, a bunch of things that I probably would not have become interested in if it wasn't me sort of tripping down that particular um, rabbit hole. Um, so I think it has, it's, it's opened my eyes in lots of different ways. I mean, for me, one of the, the most satisfying things of, about being out is I, I never travel a bit like this conversation. I don't have a, I don't have an agenda. So um, if I, if I decide to go out to do some photography, I'll sort of select somewhere that I think, well, hey, yeah, that might be quite interesting. But I don't have ever have any preconceived idea of what picture I will make. I right. have no idea what picture I'm going to make, if any. And if I don't make a picture, it doesn't really bother me. Right. Um, so um, I think it's made me much more um, reactive. It's made me much more open um, to possibilities. Uh, and I think a lot of landscape photographers, they start with um, the target first. Uh, rather than the, the inquiry 
Um, and, and I think that that's, well, for me, it strikes me, for, for one thing, it strikes me as a, as a, a bet, um, kind of putting the uh, cart before the horse. So if you think most visual arts, they start, the, the artist starts with an idea, they start with a notion, they start with a theme, they start with an emotion that they want to explore, and then they create something around that theme. Whereas photographers seem to start with the thing uh, and photographing the thing, whatever it is, whether it's a landscape or flowers or, or whatever they're photographing, and then hoping that some alchemy will generate something in the process. Um, and I think uh, it's too often, they too often mistake subject for object and object for subject. They mm -hmm. get that mixed up. Um, and, I, and I think for me, the, the subject of most of my photographs is this inquiry. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not the thing that I'm presenting in the photograph, um, which means that most of the time, as I, I think I've already touched upon, uh, when people look at my pictures, they probably don't get the same thing out of them as, as I get out of them because they, they don't have that, that personal experience. But I don't know that that's necessarily a problem. Now, where were we? Has it <laughs> where, I've just appeared down a rabbit hole or two. We're there. in the matrix, are we? <laughs> um, has this opened up new perspectives? So intellectually and philosophically, I think it's opened up new perspectives. Uh, in terms of personal growth, um, well, I suppose that that's bound to have happened as part of that process, but um, uh, I haven't seen it as a... Um, as a spiritual journey, I suppose, um, more as an intellectual or a philosophical journey. The, the the thing I really love about this is that photography can be any number of things, almost an infinite uh, variety of things from, from ego um, um, inflation uh, to, you know, a popularity race and, uh, you know, a financial, uh, you know, all sorts of different things, or it can be used purely as a release or an escape, you know, it can be a drug in, in a way, um, it can be a distraction, it can be all sorts of different things. And I'm one of the things I enjoy most about having these conversations is talking to people whose lives are photography very much, you know, you know, I'd imagine you're very similar to me is that your whole life revolves around creative, creative living to a certain extent that it does, does that make sense? You know, that yeah, it does make sense. I don't know that I think of myself in that way. Um, uh, it's really, photography is really, really important to me. Um, it's, it's kept my attention for four decades, which I'm not sure I can think of anything else particularly that would have um, fulfilled that brief as it were. Right. Um, uh, but I also have other interests. I have, you know, music and I see you've got guitars behind you. So, so that's obviously, I think lots of different ways of creating. I like, I like woodworking. Um, I like, um, uh, yeah, making things with my hands. That, that um, was my, that, that was the absolute point that I was wanting to make there is that creative living is the root of who you are. And photography is just one aspect of that. Yeah, no, I think that's fair enough. I like writing. I mean, that's about yeah. creativity as well. I, um, although I find it much harder to do than um, than any of the other pursuits that I engage in. Um, uh, I like th I like thinking. You know, philosophy. I I very nearly um, did a degree in philosophy, um, uh, and only at the last minute decided to do photography instead. So maybe, all right, yeah. <laughs> So that's quite. And I know Guy uh, Gartel has some um, some strong links to to uh, philosophy as well. Um, so I think uh, that probably underpins quite a lot of about my approach to photography. I think that that's exactly the same for me. I, I, most of the 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 recreational reading I do is is philosophy and psychology, almost almost exclusively. In fact, because I think I am interested in why we why creativity is an important part of because I think human development whether we think about it as a as a rational cognitive thing we're, we're all developing we're all on a path we're all going from a to b through our lives and I think photography is an excellent catalyst for exploration and the external exploration is nuanced by our internal 
clock to a certain extent as well. I mean, your interests, you know, you don't go and photograph rusty buoys uh, if you're not fascinated by the structures and textures and colours and so forth that are present in them. Yeah. Uh, so that inquisitiveness is a function of your development, I suppose. One yeah. of the things that I want to go back to, like I said, I mean, for me to conduct these conversations, it's always a case of like mentally storing something you said 15 minutes ago and sort of... <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> um, you talk about, you mentioned earlier on that you, you say that when you feel that desire to go out and make photographs, because I, I also acknowledge that one of the things that people do that can be a barrier to their creativity is to go out and make photographs uh, with the intent of going out and making photographs rather than going out and just being open to yeah. the possibility that a photograph may happen. So one of the things that I was really interested in is when you're out, what are the things that trigger these desires for you to say, okay, yeah, this this thing here is something that makes me want to put the bag down and explore it to to be inquisitive about it. Um, yeah, well, I suppose the the basic underpinning things of of any visual art, so form and light and color, uh, they're all things that attract me. Um, uh, Spatial ambiguity is something that I find really interesting. So if I'm looking at something and I think, oh, well, when you when I collapse that multidimensional reality into two, that's not going to look the same. And there's going to be something that's a little bit odd about that. Um, so it's recognising that, I suppose. Uh, novelty. I think most artists like a degree of novelty, although we get stuck in. Uh, I, uh, so I don't really make series of pictures, but I know that I make what I term accidental series because I um, I return to subjects again and again. So you mentioned rust. I love rust and it's about colour and it's about texture and, and I think it's fascinating. It's also fascinating to me because, you know, for the vast majority of people, it's a really boring thing. <laughs> An unpleasant thing, in fact, I think, for mm. a lot of people. Um, so uh, those, are, those are kind of avenues of inquiry. If I'm, let's say I'm walking... I'm walking through, where have I been recently and photographed? Um, I was in the Western Lakes um, and uh, we visited uh, an abandoned uh, mine building um, on the West Coast. Uh, lots of kind of dereliction. Uh, and so initially, I think I start off by looking at form and trying to work out how, how I could place forms in juxtaposition to each other that would be interesting, that would be um, pleasing because of their color, because of their sh shape, um, because of the way the light falls on them, those kind of things. And and I, in a situation like, I think we spent about four hours there. I think I made about four pictures. Okay. So it takes me quite a long time um, to make a picture because um, there's lots of kind of, okay, well, I need to move the camera two inches this way, three inches that way, that sort of stuff, very, lots of fine tuning. Um, that was actually one of the things that I really struggled with when um, I moved from large format to right. um, digital because it was too facile, it was too easy. Mm -hmm. um, and so the only way that I got back into that headspace, which was about um, really taking my time and really concentrating uh, was to uh, get a, tilt adapter and to always manually focus and really slow down the process. Again. Do you use the Cambo Actus? No, I use a, a Myrex uh, okay. tilt shift adapter um, and uh, quite small number of lenses, just four lenses. Okay. Um, uh, and um, I, I, I enjoy that simplicity, yeah. So, one of the things I think is always fascinating is there's so many different ways to practice photography. There's a spontaneous um, approach of just recognition and um, and I think that's very much how I photograph things. And that was from my time in the Gobi Desert and just reacting to form as, as yeah. and geometry and lines and, and um, colour uh, and contrast. So 
that that sort of very intuitively reactive, spontaneous sort of um, serendipitous approach, I suppose, yeah. where it's just a moment in time. And it's more recognizing something as being either harmonious or, amb or ambiguous or a juxtaposition or a contrast or whatever it may be. And then there's there seems to be another sort of cognitive level of um, where there's more degrees of precision and working towards a goal almost. Um, yeah. And that's quite a spectrum. I mean, that's quite a spectrum of difference in terms of its approach. As you've been teaching workshops, do you feel that there are more successful methods than others to allow people to find where they exist on that spectrum? Um, okay, so... Without giving you all your trade okay. secrets. <laughs> <laughs> there are a couple, a couple of things, I suppose. Um, First of all, what I quite often have to get over is people's um, uh, lack of confidence in their own abilities. That they, uh, the 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 perennial human thing of comparing their work with somebody else's and saying, "Well, I'm no good, and I never will be any good." And so, one of the things that I try to do there is to make them make pictures that are outside their comfort zone, that are not things that they would normally look at for subjects. And then with that discovery that there are more things than they thought were available, um, usually comes uh, uh, the dawning of this notion of inquiry. Um, and then over time, they, they then become um, self-starting on that. Mm -hmm. um, and I think one of the problems, the way photography is taught um, in, at least, you know, in the magazine articles that we, that we would typically see and in a lot of books is it's taught as a very specific process and it's basically taught as a technical process. Um, it's about getting the correct exposure. It's about getting it super sharp. It's about all of those kind of things. Um, and actually those bear very little, um, uh, they have very little bearing, I should say, on whether it's a successful photograph or not. Um, so so the way that I, I try to get people to um, uh, kind of uh, move from, well, I don't, so I don't necessarily want them to move from reactive to, uh, to a, a, um, a more uh, slow burn approach, because I, uh, what I want them to do is what I want them to do what suits them. So right. if you somebody like Mark Littlejohn, um, he's, he's not a man who uses a tripod or very rarely uses yeah. a tripod. And for him, it's an impediment. He, he, he wants to be free flowing. He wants to take pictures um, in that second that he sees it and, um, and that works for him. And then for other people, myself included, I need, I need the tripod, I need the anchor. I need that to slow me down. Um, so the assessment process for um, uh, participants is really to see how they work and to see and to watch them um, and to see what what might ignite their passion, what might um, kind of be the best way for them to move forwards, um, rather than to be proscriptive or prescriptive, really. So it has to be adaptive, uh, which is a kind of complex thing and sometimes seems like you're not teaching them anything. Do you know what I mean? Because I because I mean there will be conversations about oh well how should I what what f stop should I use for this where should I focus all of those kind of technical conversations will will occur, but in terms of actually growing their ability to recognise subjects and to um, and to to find avenues to explore um, that has to be much more gentle. I, I think if you push too hard, you uh, minor white famously yeah. um, taught at, at Rochester and um, he he basically turned out a set of clones because anybody who didn't make the same kind of photographs as him got very seriously um, downgraded yeah. in the marking system. And, and there were two or three notable photographers who came at, out from learning with him who set up their own style. But basically it destroyed most of the people who, <laughs> who, who studied under him. You know, they, they, didn't, they didn't really learn very much. And I, and I suspect... Um, a similar sort of thing probably happened to some degree with with Ansel, um, 
here's me calling him Ansel. I never met the man. Um, <laughs> uh, and but I think a good teacher is somebody who actually tries to assess each individual and then tries to work out what's the best way to lead them forward. Um, and that usually takes a number of um, encounters. So I've got some some participants who've been traveling with me for 20 years now, yeah, right. since I started. Uh, some, one guy's done over 50 tours and workshops and, Goodness and me. you might say, well, you know, well, has he not learnt by now? <laughs> <laughs> um, but he, he's, it's, it's evolving, it's constantly evolving. And so, and so that's the, I'm evolving. You know, what I, what I, how I saw teaching 20 years ago is not how I see teaching now. Um, and, and he's evolving as well. Um, so it's a, it's an ongoing process. I don't, I don't think it's a, it's, it's not the same as in a book where you think, oh, okay, well, this is what I do. I, here are the steps, the five steps and bang. Um, does that make sense? Yes, very much <laughs> so. Very much so. And, you know, I agree with this, this evolving nature of us. There's nothing better than someone coming back in a workshop after a, a year or, or even six months and saying, well, that's very different from what you said the last time. Um, you know, because as you say, we, we have different perspectives. And I think I'm moving much further away from any con sort of trying to have, I, I strongly disagree with the notion that there is absolute truth in in teaching landscape photography, you know, for every example of something that works, there's innumerable examples of the same thing not working. All, all, all art is relative. There are no absolutes in, right. in, in any aspect of art, whether it's teaching art or practicing art. And so you, you can't say there is a single correct method. Uh, and that actually, one of the reasons why people lack confidence when they start off, I think, is um, most of us live in a in a society that encourages convergent thought, that what we're doing is we're searching for an optimal solution to the mm. problem that's presented at work or with the family budget or whatever it is, we're looking for an optimal solution. And art is all about divergent thought. It's all about the fact that in any situation there are numerous, perhaps almost infinite possibilities of which direction you might go with what you're going to produce. and um you need to recognize that and somebody who doesn't recognize that somebody who says it's my way or the highway is actually all they're doing is constraining the possibilities of the person who's who's come to them to learn um, absolutely you're doing them a huge disservice really i couldn't agree with that anymore i couldn't I, I, sorry i couldn't yes i couldn't agree more that's that's what i was trying to say yeah i i did astronomy and astrophysics at university that was my i didn't do arts at, right. at any, um and i'm very very interested in the concept of infinity with regards to our creativity um and i'm very very against the concept of compartmentalization that photography has to be this um so i think we're very much on the same wavelength with with that regard is that too much of that preconception of what photography is, I think, is a, is a handicap rather than than a than a benefit. Um, how much how much divergence is there in the type of photographs that you like to make? You know, I mean, David Ward is present in all of their creation. Yeah. How many different facets of David Ward are being expressed through your photography? I was having a conversation with somebody about this the other day and I said, well, actually, I'm, I'm quite a limited photographer. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I guess um, not a huge amount. I mean, I, 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 I do make um, the wider classical landscape views. Um, mostly I do it, uh, well, for a couple of reasons. One because um, as, a, as a teacher, it's a good thing to have in your portfolio to show people um, and for selling tours and that, that kind of stuff. And, and also because sometimes when you stand in, some, in front of something, it's just like, wow, you yeah. know, I have, to, I, have, I, have to, I have to capture that. Uh, afterwards, do those pictures really move me particularly? Not as much as the ones which I think are, um, are more about solving a puzzle. Um, so it's it's very difficult to know 
how how um <laughs> how broad a spectrum of images I make. Um, people, because when you when you're on the inside looking out, um, it's very difficult for, to assess what your style is, I suppose. Um, but people <laughs> tell me. Um, that my style is is uh, is kind of distilled and graphically strong. Um, it's about light and color, um, and um, I think that's probably fair enough. Um, those are all things that that interest me. I'm very I'm a, I'm very interested in the graphic um, because that all that all goes back to the kind of trying to understand the psychology of perception and. Um, uh, so that that all fits in with it, um, but I think I make I make pictures over a relatively um, small um, window of possibilities. Uh, I mean, I have made a lot of different pictures. I, I was a documentary photographer for a while. I was an advertising photographer. Um, I photographed dogs for a book on dog behaviour. I've photo I've done all sorts of things in the past, right. um, but I've settled into for the last 10 or more years, I've settled into a groove of wanting to make these pictures, which are visual inquiries for me, um, because I still find that fascinating because I still feel that I haven't really even scratched the surface on that. Right. Um, and I think that's why uh, I will, I increase, uh, I, I, sorry, not increasingly, I, I decreasingly, um, photograph some subjects because I feel well actually I photographed that before and either I found it was a dead end or I found that uh, you know whatever's in front of me doesn't isn't doesn't match up to what I've already photographed um, uh, and I do try and find new new um, possibilities all the time um, but no I think I not not a hugely versatile photographer <laughs> 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 no, the, 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 I believe the expression is hoisted by your own petard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs>